I don't know. Um, he, he's he's always nervous and he's always focused for every game. But um, I think um, we're a professional athlete, so we know what we have to do, and we know that we basically have to go out there and play good defense and not let teams run on us and, and go out and just and just have fun and play loose and, and, and shoot the basketball the way we're capable of shooting. And you mentioned defense, and I know George Carl is really big on that. What about your defensive game? Are you happy with that? Oh, I'm happy. It's getting better. Um, it's getting better and better. Um, <clears throat> but we, we have a, um, a great team concept right now. Um, we all help each other out. If one man gets beat, the next man have to rotate and, and step up. And, and uh, when they pass it to his man, somebody else have to cover up for him. So we've been kind of covering each other's backs. One guy who does that very well is your teammate, Ray Allen. He got off to sort of a slow start. A lot of the guys who played in the Olympics uh, seem to have sort of a hangover. Do you think that was part of the, the problem as far as his slow start? Oh, well, you know, it's a big time time difference. And um, <clears throat> he set out a couple of days from camp and, and he slowly got back into it. So I think that probably was a, um, a factor in, in, in the way he started. But I think everyone, we, the whole team was just in the funk and, and we wasn't making shots. And, and, and you have to make shots in order to win a ball game as well as play on defense. And we were shooting 4 for 14 and 5 for 17. And that's not going to get it in this league. He started to turn things around. Now, you have a game coming up this week against the New York Knicks. One of the teams, obviously, that you have to beat in the Eastern Conference. No Marcus Camby for them. How do you see this matchup? Oh, it's a big matchup for us. But um, this team has been giving us problems for the last couple of years. Um, um, the, even the last game we played, we kind of gave them life after death. Um, they found a way to force it into overtime, and that just kind of zapped all of our energy away from us. And they went on to win the game. Um, last year, I can remember... Uh, Latrell Sprewell hit a three-pointer to send the game into overtime, and that gave him confidence again. So once we get this team down, we have to try to focus and try to close the game out a little better than what we did in the past. Now, the Eastern Conference, considered to be wide open, now that your team is back on track, how far do you think you can go, and how do you see the Eastern Conference shaking out? Well, like you said, it's wide open, but we, we just have to go out and play. We just have to go out and compete every night, and we can't take any nights off. The teams that we're supposed to beat, we have to go out and dominate them. And if we can split with the, uh, with the good teams, then we'll be in good shape. All right, Glenn Robinson from Milwaukee, thanks for your time. You guys are fun to watch. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. The Milwaukee Bucks have the second highest scoring trio in the NBA behind only the Lakers Big Three, which is, of course, really mostly the Lakers Big Two with Kobe and Shaq. Trios translate into wins. These three teams on the screen have won, on average, 64% of their games this year.